Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in 6.4 we're going to be reintroducing our inverse trigonometric functions, but this time we're going to be dealing with them in terms of angles instead of in terms of real numbers. So let's take a look. As before, in order to talk about an inverse trig function, we need to restrict the domains of our trig functions so that these functions are one-to-one -one and thus have an inverse. So here I've written the domains, but let's go ahead and draw this in. Our restricted sign here in terms of angles is going to look like this. Right? We're only looking at angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. This is where our restricted sign is going to be and this is where the inverse of sine is going to exist. For cosine we can look at angles anywhere between 0 and pi and for tangent we can look at angles anywhere between 0 and pi over 2 but this is not inclusive. Right? We know tangents not defined at negative pi over 2 and is not defined at pi over 2, so we can talk about anything between those values, but we can't talk about negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 themselves. So these are what our restricted domains look like in terms of the angles, and just remember I'm drawing in these quadrants, but specifically we should be looking here to know exactly what I mean, right? I don't mean, um, you know, for example here for cosine, um, 5 pi over 2 is right here on the positive y-axis, but that's not between 0 and pi, so that's not going to be a candidate for the domain of my restricted cosine. Now with these, restricted, with these restrictions in place, we define the functions in a very similar way that we did before. Now for sine inverse or arc sine, if we have sine x equals y, we can think of that as an equivalent statement to sine inverse of y equals x. Draw these in here. And sine inverse has a domain of negative 1 to 1 and a range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. It's just the opposite of the domain and range of my restricted sine function. Cosine inverse is the same as we talked about before where the domain is negative 1 to 1 and my range is 0 to pi. And just like before my tangent inverse or arctan has a domain of all real numbers and a range of the open interval, right, we may need to make sure we're open here, of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And just remember, by definition, sine x equals y means that sine inverse of y equals x and that uh, x is in this range. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. These are going to be very similar to chapter 5. And in the next couple of videos, we'll see how we can apply this to what we've learned about triangles and angles. So let's take a look. Find the exact value, sine inverse of the square root of 3 halves. So just recall by definition from that last page, if sine inverse of, the, of root 3 over 2 equals x, by definition what that means is, it means that sine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2 and x is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right, now this is why we need this restriction. Because of this restriction there's only one possible solution for x and I know that between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 sine of pi over 3 equals root 3 over 2 so x is going to be pi over 3. This is within my restriction and sine of pi over 3 is going to give me root 3 over 2 so this is my answer. Similarly with this second example Cosine of inverse equals negative one, or sorry, cosine inverse of negative one half equals x. By definition, what that means is, is that cosine of x equals negative one half, and x is between zero and pi. So I need to find the value between zero and pi, where cosine of that value is negative one half. Now, taking a look at this. I'm negative, so I'm in quadrant 2, and my reference number here for 1 half is going to be pi over 3, I know cosine is 1 half at positive pi over 3, so I'm going to be looking and I, f I can see that cosine of 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 2, this does give me a negative 1 half, and it's between 0 and pi, so my x is going to equal 2 pi over 3. Okay. Now next video we're going to take this and we're just, in the next couple of videos we're going to be doing mostly examples but in the next video in particular we're going to use this to find the unknown angles of right triangles when we're given limited information. We'll see you there.